Hello, sound check. Sir Howard here. Hello, how's everyone doing? Today we are going to talk about still on intelligence. This is the second part of our discussion on this topic. Kung naalala ninyo, part 1, I answered this question. What does it mean to be intelligent? We defined the essence or the heart of being smart. Ano ba talagang ibig sabihin when you say that a person is smart? That's what we talk about in part 1. Today, we answer a different question. We will discuss, now how do we improve our intelligence? Now that we know what it means to be smart, so how do we make ourselves a little bit smarter? So before we answer this question, meron muna akong ipapagawa sa inyo. I want you to write down in the comment section of this video, the last time that you did something to enhance your intelligence. Specifically, what did you do? Kapag naniniwala ka na yung activity na yan, ginawa mo yan para tumalino ka, tumaas yung level of intelligence mo, I would like to know, please type that in the comment section. Okay, so just pause this video if you need to. So we proceed. I want to start this lecture by saying that it is our responsibility to enhance our intelligence. Sa Tagalog, gusto kong gamitin yung salita na pagyamanin or to enrich. So all of us are intelligent. It is our responsibility to enrich our intelligence. In the Bible, if you're familiar with the parable of the talents, that's exactly what is being taught to us. So there was a master and he has three slaves and then the master is going on a trip but before he went to a trip pinatawag niya yung tatlong servants niya servants A, B, and C and then he gave them talents or money in their in their context so ang instruction niya doon is I will be out for a certain period of time here's the money your responsibility is to multiply whichever money whichever amount of money I am going to give you. Fast forward, the master went away and then the three servants did their thing to increase their talents or their money. Okay? So what happened? To make the long story short, bumalik yung master and then that's the first thing he did. Pinatawag niya yung mga servants niya to check what they did with the talents that he gave to them. And the first servant said, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well, good. Uh, my trust and work, ye servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The same reaction he had towards the second servant. Ano ang common denominator between the first and the second servant? Pareho nilang multiply yung talents nila. They both multiplied what was given to them. While the third servant, he was the only one who did not do anything to multiply his talent. Ang ginawa niya, he dug the, he hid the money under the ground kasi raw natakot siya na baka malugi, baka ma, mabawasan yung pera na binigay sa kanya. So to make the long story short for the third servant who simply hid the money under the ground, doon nagalit yung master. Diba sinabi niya doon sa servant, you're a lazy servant. So to make the long story short, if you compare the first two servants with the third servant, what is that parable teaching us? That whatever God gives us, it is our spiritual responsibility to develop. Whatever God gave us it is our spiritual responsibility to develop and that includes your intelligence also gusto ko lang din idagdag no in, in connection to the to the point i'm currently discussing intelligence must not be monopolized by schools most students they have a wrong framework about intelligence which is they believe their intelligence is the responsibility of the school if they want to be smarter, they need to go to school. They expect the school to do all the work, 100% of the work, to make themselves more intelligent 
this is a wrong framework. So here's your intelligence, and then you go to school, and then you expect the school to give you better intelligence. A better framework to have is, if you are one of those students na ganyan ang framework, mali yan, this is a correct framework. Although schools can really increase your intelligence, there are other forces out there other than the school that can also increase your intelligence. Don't make school monopolize the process of improving your intelligence. Kaya nga, di ba, pinag-usapan din natin last meeting that it's still possible for a person to be intelligent even that even if that person does not attend school or does not enter any formal education. Because again, this framework works you may not have formal schooling but there are other forces out there psychological forces out there that can still work on your intelligence for you to have a better one hindi lang school ang laging paraan para mas tumalino ka all right so now we go we start answering the question that we want to answer today paano ba nag improve yung intelligence natin okay now, the key to answering that question is to know where does intelligence come from. If we want to know the different ways how to improve our intelligence, we have to have a clear understanding saan ba nanggagaling yung intelligence. So, I am going to discuss with you three sources of intelligence. And as I discuss the three sources, uh, I discuss ko na rin yung mga strategies that you can use to improve your intelligence. So, saan galing ang intelligence? Number one, genetics. Believe it or not, how smart a person is, it's largely hereditary. In fact, a lot of geneticists were able to estimate how many percent of our genes contribute to our intelligence, around 50%. So, kung anumang level of intelligence mo ngayon, 50% factor why you are that smart it's because of what you genetically inherited from your parents. So, the intellectual capacity of both of your parents, 50% of that you genetically inherit, which may explain why your current level of intelligence is like that. In fact, given this um, idea on the contribution of genes on intelligence, this statement becomes valid. Eh. Di ba meron tayo mga experiences where we encounter people whose family whose members of the family are all intelligent parang lahat ng kamag-anak nila lahat ng ng ninu, ninuno nila lahat ng members ng ancestry nila matatalino meron daw silang lahi ng matatalino that word right there lahi it's a genetic term so it's possible for a person belongs to a family who is genetically gifted to be intelligent let me give you one example of a person who is like that, although I changed the name. But all of us, along the way, we will encounter someone who is like this. You just read on your own silently. You can just pause the video if you like. So these kinds of people, bakit parang ang dali-dali lang maging matalino sa kanila? Parang hindi sila uh, ganun ka mag-effort. They are not exerting that high effort to be intelligent because again it can be that genetically they are smart but let me just clarify something in connection to the idea that intelligence can be genetic it is not the intelligence that we inherit that's a wrong framework so going back here this is a wrong framework all right most people think when you say oh yung taong to genetically smart no Akala natin yung yung genes nung yung namana natin the genes that we inherit it contains certain elements of intelligence. Siguro to to, to make this better no um look at this. Yan. I think this best represents what I'm talking about. We think that the genes we inherit contains intelligence and as we grow older that intelligence becomes us and we end up being smart. It's not that our genes don't contain intelligence. That's why no one is born intelligent. Kasi kapag ganyan yung paniniwala mo, 
kapag ganyan yung framework mo, you believe that your genes carries intelligence, then that means a person can be born intelligent. Baby pa lang intelligent na, which is not possible. All babies, using the definition of intelligence, they still have low levels of intelligence. So this is a wrong framework to have. Your genes don't directly or don't exactly contain elements of intelligence that makes you intelligent. Rather, ano ang correct framework? This is a correct framework. The genes that you inherit from your parents affects your biology. And there are certain elements in your biology that will positively influence your capacity to be intelligent. Just read this one. Biological capacities make a person easier to be intelligent. Like what? What are those biological factors that you inherited genetically that sets the way, sets the road to you becoming smarter? Like for example, your ability to pay attention, your ability to remember information, or even your temperament, how you regulate your emotions. Because all those are very important in making you more intelligent. Halimbawa, yung attention, di ba? Kasi madali kang mag-focus. You are not easily distracted. And that has something to do with the brain. That has something to do with the quality of your nervous system. The same thing with memory. Di ba? The, your memory capacity, although again, your memory capacity depends on the techniques that you use, but you cannot deny that memory capacity also depends on the quality of your brain. So, kapag maganda yung quality ng brain mo, malamang sa malamang, eh, maganda rin yung memory mo. Your, your, your brain easily absorbs information. Your brain is able to move information from sensory to short-term to long-term memory faster. Maybe less rehearsal ang kailangan mo to remember information. Temperament, again, how you control your emotion, it's very biological. And that's important for being smart. You are not easily frustrated. So every, every time you learn something and you fail, you don't get frustrated. Rather, you become more motivated. So you try over and over again until you get it right. So kapag ganun yung attitude mo, o ganun yung, 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 yung pag-control mo sa frustrations mo, then that will make you more intelligent than someone who is easily frustrated. You see the point? But again, attention, memory, temperament are all depending on the quality of your biology, your nervous system, and your brain cells. Now, th that attribute, attributes of biology leads to you becoming more intelligent. Okay? So that is a correct framework and not this one. I hope that's clear. So, given all these things about the role of genetics on intelligence, one application we can learn here is you can choose a smart partner if you want your offspring to be smart. Wala ka nang magagawa na application in connection to yourself because that's already you eh. Diba? I mean, ikaw na yan. You already have, you already inherited that, that genetic limit in terms of your intelligence. Hanggang dyan na lang yung intelligence mo. Although, as we will discuss later, pwede mo pang a little bit improve yan. Pero, there's just a limit to how far you can still improve your intelligence because of what you genetically inherited. But, if you cannot totally apply this principle anymore to yourself, you can still apply this to your future offspring. So let's say you marry someone who is very smart and you are very smart, then higher tendency that your baby will inherit again the biological attributes that will make that baby smarter in the future. And how do you do that again? By choosing a smart partner. Para yung, yung genetics niya will both contain um, attributes of being intelligent coming from you and coming from the person that you are going to marry kaya dapat kung gusto niyo yung babies niyo na maging smart in the future one quality that you need to be looking for from a partner is that person is also smart like you all right clear 
Now, let's move on to source number two. Saan ba nanggagaling yung intelligence? Did you know that intelligence can also be influenced by the environment? So, intelligence is not 100% genetics. And this is good news. Let's say you don't have a genetic gift to be intelligent. Hindi ganun katalino. Hindi ganun kaganda yung biological attributes ng mga kamag-anak mo uh, that can make you smart. It's not too late. Because genetics does not monopolize the level of your intelligence because another psychological force that has a big contribution to your level of intelligence is your environment. The right environment enhances intelligence. Take for example a flower. Ang isang halaman, bakit ba namumulaklak? How do you make a plant bear flower if that plant is in the right kind of environment? Maganda yung hangin, na uulanan, na aarawan, inaalagaan ng gardener ng mga basic nutrients, then that plant will bear flower and later on even fruit. The same thing with intelligence. Some people are not intelligent. Some people are very intelligent. Why? Environmental differences. Alright? So again, even if we have a genetic, even if genes have genetic contribution to our intelligence, our environment also has a say how smart we will become. To illustrate my uh, point, I want you to again read this case, the case of Marcelo. Just pause the video if, if you, you need more time. But this case will show you the contribution of environment on our intelligence. I want to emphasize on the yellow words. Look at that. How did he become a very intelligent person that he does heart surgeries in the United States? When he was young, while he was still training, he surrounded himself with books, watched educational TV videos in the internet, shop, talked to his teachers, and spent countless hours studying in their library, and then he even achieved a scholarship. All these things are environmental forces that enhanced his intelligence. See? In fact, kung titignan nyo nga dito, no, in the first part of his, of his short description, he has a genetic problem. It's possible that he even inherited the genetic conditions his parents had. Hindi maganda yung genetic background niya. But, he still ended up being intelligent because the environment compensated for the poor genetic quality that he has. But let's be clear about this. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng environment? Genes we understand, right? Genes are the biological elements we inherit from our parents. It's within us. It's within our DNAs. But when we talk about the environment, this is something external to us. You can find these things around you, not inside you. And what are these things? People that you talk to every day, resources available to you such as money or books, technology such as the internet, institutions that you are a member of like schools or maybe small groups or even churches, and culture. Like if you are living in a culture where learning is valued versus you're, you're in a culture where entertainment is more important will determine your intelligence. Clear? So, all these things you can see right now have big contributions in terms of how intelligent a person will be. The more you have this in your advantage to shape intelligence, to enhance intelligence, the smarter a person can become. To demonstrate how important environment is in enhancing intelligence, I want you to research about the maze doll and the maze bright rats. I mean, it's a very popular experiment in the field of psychology. I want you to read about the exact details of these studies. Ang sasabihin ko lang dito is the highlight of the study. So, there were two group of rats in the experiment, the maize doll and the maize bright rats. Difference from the words itself, maize doll rats are very dull rats, low levels of intelligence, while maize bright rats are high intelligence rats. 
how did they know if the rats have high or low intelligence? It was based on how good they are in solving a maze. So, yung mga rats na magagaling mag-solve ng maze, maze bright. Yung mga rats na hindi ganun kagaling, maze dull rats. And by the way, their dullness and their brightness were genetically determined. In the first phase of the experiment, they selected rats who are genetically dull. Again, hindi maganda yung biological attributes nila in connection to intelligence. And they also got rats whose, whose genetics are good for intelligence. And then they bred this two group of rats and then that was the basis for forming the maize dull and the maize bright rats. Alright? So what happened in the experiment? So, merong dalawang grupo ng mga daga, the dull and the bright rats, no? They tried to alter the kinds of environment where these rats are being taken care of. So, to better understand, yan, look at this data. Palakihin natin, ha? So, the circle, the white circle is the data for maize dull rats. The black circle is maize bright rats. Take a look at this. If the environment is poor, again, I want to emphasize the environment. If the maize dull and the maize bright rats were, were nurtured in a poor environment, meaning the environment is not stimulating, boring, wala masyadong pwedeng gawin dun sa environment na yun, it's not intellectually stimulating, the error that they commit in the maze is very high. Regardless if you are maze dull or maze bright rat. Gets? Because the environment is poor. And again, take note of the data coming from the maze bright rats. Remember, these are genetically bright rats. But bred in a poor environment, they perform worse, as worse as the dull rats. Sa Tagalog, hindi lumabas yung katalinuhan nila. Why? Poor environment. But if we improve the environment a little bit from poor, let's call it normal, what happens? Now the differences appears. It comes out. So the maize dull rats, because they're dull, genetically dull, committed lots of errors. But look at the data of the maize bright rats. Lumabas yung galing nila dito. Now they committed fewer errors compared to the dull rats. Why? Because the environment improved. From poor, it became normal. But look at the last kind of environment that they use in this experiment. It's a rich environment. Very intellectually stimulating. It enriches, it enhances the intelligence of the rats. What happens? Even the dull rats, genetically dull rats, when they are bred within a rich environment, intellectually stimulating, look at the big improvement that happens to them. They became, they perform better or they, they perform as good as the bright rats. And what explains that? Because of the environment. So kahit na genetically dull ka, kapag maganda yung environment mo, it's intellectually stimulating, it will improve your intelligence and be improve your performance. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina that the genes does not have a monopoly of our intelligence. Kahit wala kang genetic gift to become intelligent, but if you are nurtured in the right environment, just like what we saw from the rats, you can still improve your intelligence. Kaya ang lesson dito is, and also the application, the right environment matters. If you want to improve your own intelligence or the intelligence of another person, one thing to do is to improve the current environment of that person. And in your context, that can mean what school do you enter into. Right? Choosing a good school counts. Like for example, I would consider LaSalle and Benil good schools. 
these schools, I would say, in the context of the experiment of maize doll and maize bright rats, rich environment. Kasi pag pumasok ka sa mga eskwelahan na yan, Lasal and Benilde, your environment will be very intellectually stimulating. Right? Paano natin nalaman? We have the best curriculum. We have the best facilities. We have the smartest teachers in every field of knowledge. Why, why do these things matter? Because these things will enhance a person's overall level of intelligence. Kaya yan, yan, yung, yan din yung reason why tuition fee in Lasal or Benilde is very expensive because it takes money to develop a very intellectually enriching environment. So sana huwag kayong magagalit bakit masyadong mataas ang tuition fee ng Lasal or ng Benilde because it takes resources. It takes value para yung, in, yung environment ng mga estudyante maging super ganda. I'm sure a lot of you cannot relate because it's the pandemic. You don't have first-hand experience of how good the environment of the university is. But I hope if this pandemic ends and you go back to school, you will remember this lesson. In terms of curriculum, facilities, teachers, grabe yung investment ng Lasal sa environment just to help students improve their intelligence. Okay? Another application that we can learn here is, this time it's more personal. Ito kasi, ang nag-decide niyan, parents niyo, eh, di ba? O, dyan kayo mag-aaral. Pero kayo mismo, meron kayong pwedeng gawin to improve your intelligence in connection to your environment. You have the power to design an intellectually stimulating environment. The question is, are you are you designing your environment to be intellectually stimulating? What do I mean? Let's start with the basic environment that you are in. Your bedroom. Kapag nagpunta ba kami sa bedroom mo, can we sense that inside your bedroom, it's intellectually stimulating? Sir, how, what do you mean by an intellectually stimulating bedroom? Something like this. O, oh, ba? Kapag ganyan yung bedroom mo, punong-puno ng mga resources that can enhance your intellect, that will open your mind to different ideas, then that is an intellectually stimulating environment. Kwarto na pampatalino. Kasi merong kwarto na pampatamad. ba? Pag puro, ano lang nandoon, puro magazine, puro jaryo, puro video games, yan. Yan yung kwarto na pampatamad. But make your bedroom your basic environment, your personal space, intellectually stimulating. Ako, myself, ha? meron akong ganyan. In fact, I am currently in it right now. This is my personal library. I don't know if you can visualize where I'm sitting there, but this is the environment that I am in. I make it a point that whenever I am inside this world, this space, it will make me smarter by surrounding myself with great books about areas of interest that I care about, I love this space. Kaya dapat kayo ganyan din. And this is within your power. Kwarto mo yan eh. More or less, you have a control. The control of the intellectual level that your room will have. Are you investing in books? Are you investing in things that will improve your intelligence and, and place it in your personal space? That's within your control. Now, some of you may tell me, Sir, wala akong pambili ng maraming libro. You know, that's not an excuse. Because another kind of environment, which I think you have a say, which I think you can highly control, is your digital environment. Kung wala ka mang sariling kwarto, wala ka mang sariling library, remember that your digital environment is a kind of environment. And nowadays, because of advances in technology, it is so easy to intellectually or to, to improve or to make your digital environment very intellectual. Tandaan nyo ha, lahat ng nakikita nyo sa laptop nyo, lahat ng nasa tablet nyo, cell phones, even your Google account is considered a digital environment. Question, are there resources in these things that you have 
that improves your intelligence. Take for example your tablet. Compare. Anong mas maraming laman sa tablet mo? Do you it does it contain more games or more books? If you want to be smarter, it should contain more books than games. The same thing with laptops. Anong mas marami dyan? PDF files that you read which can make you more intelligent or more apps for games and for other useless activities. Did you know that you can have your own digital library using Google? They have Google library. You can download download ebooks in the Google library. Yes. And a lot of those ebooks that you can download are for free. Almost all classic textbooks in psychology or in any fields of knowledge, you can download through your Google library. Be honest. Do you have a Google library? Do you even know that there's Google library and you can take advantage of this to make yourself smarter? Talk about YouTube. YouTube also has a library. Yun lang videos. But what kinds of videos are you watching? Are these videos that make you smarter or makes you entertained? You see? My point here is it's so easy to improve your intelligence via your digital environment. I hope you are exerting effort to really enhance both your physical environment and digital environment to help you become more intelligent. Source number three of intelligence. I hope you're learning so far. Source number three, painom mo na ng water. If you want to be more intelligent, another way to do it other than genes, other than the physical and the digital environment, effort or desire. Meron kang ang genes. Kompleto naman yung resources mo, both physical environment and digital environment, pero tamad ka. Wala ka namang effort, wala ka namang desire to improve your intelligence, it wouldn't work. To take advantage of all the things that you have, both genetics and environmental, you need to develop effort and desire to be smarter. Going back to Marcelo, look at those words in yellow. That was the key. Again, he does not have a good genetic background, but his environment helped him become smarter. But the environment did not make him smart by itself. The first step was he wanted to be smarter. Marcelo is really motivated to study to help his family escape poverty. There's hunger for learning. There's hunger to improve his intelligence so he can improve the life of his family. Now, that motivation, that hunger that he has enabled him to move towards activities, towards resources, towards environment that makes him smarter. Are you getting my point? Hindi lang basta na ilagay mo sa environment yung tao, tatalino na. Paano kung walang desire? You place a person in an intellectually stimulating environment but he's lazy. She does not have the desire. Wala rin. So you have to start here. You need to realize that, hey, I want to be smart. I need to be smart. That will empower you to make changes in your environment. You are going to expose yourself to intellectually stimulating things and that will make you more intelligent. To demonstrate that principle, I would like to use our mayor here in Manila, Isko Moreno. Question, did he have an intellectually stimulating environment when he was younger? Wala. Paano ko na lamang wala? Eh, yung environment niya noon, it's not good. Basurero siya eh. At kinukwento naman niya yan. He always tell this in whenever he he tells stories about his childhood. He did not have a good childhood. Environmentally speaking, they were living near garbages. This is an this is a not a non-intellectual environment. Puro basura, puro baho. Siya mismo nagsabi niya, 'di ba? Kaya nga sabi niya in one interview, akalain ninyo. Basurero lang ako. Naging mayor ako ng Maynila. 
how could be a garbage boy become one day a mayor of Manila? What do you think? Increase in intelligence. Did he have genes for it? I doubt. I doubt. Did he have a good environment? No. As I've said, lumaki siya malapit sa basurahan. That is not intellectually stimulating. But what enabled him to improve his intelligence? Wala naman siyang genetics for it. Wala naman siyang environment for it. He has the willingness. He has the passion. He has the hunger to improve himself. He is so dedicated educating himself to improve his intelligence. It started there. And then he found ways on how to answer his hunger for intelligence. Take a look at his journey in improving his intelligence. Diba? Elementary pa lang, oh. oh. Pinagsikapan niya yan. Hindi siya huminto ng elementary, nag high school yan. Oh, most people in poverty, they would be happy with a high school diploma but not isko. What does he do? He works harder and then finishes college. In fact, it was during this time that he became popular in showbiz. He already has some savings here. And again, a lot of artistas, a lot of actors, while w once they have a big amount of money, because of their popularity, they stop the hunger for more intelligence. They begin to spend and spend and spend without improving their intelligence. But not Yorme Isko. He's already popular here. But what does he do? He saves more and more money. Because he uses those money to further improve himself. Right? So he doesn't stop. Goes to Arellano University. Later, he goes on to Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. Later on, he goes to UP Diliman. Later on, he goes to Washington, D.C. Later on, he goes to Oxford. Later on, he goes to Harvard. You see? What is enabling Yorme Isko to become smarter and smarter? Willingness, effort, desire to make himself more and more intelligent. Diba? That's the principle that I'm teaching here. So if we are going to put that in the diagram, it looks like this. So you have that desire to improve yourself intellectually. That will move you to expose yourself to intellectual environment. You'll find ways. Buy books. Stay in school. Watch videos in YouTube that will improve your intelligence. Talk to people who are more intelligent than you. So later on, you become intelligent like them or even more intelligent than them. Desire exposes you to intellectual environment. And then, that's the time. The ending here is you have better intelligence. It all starts here with the effort and the desire so that's the question that i want to ask you right now i want you to take time to reflect are you that hungry to improve your intelligence are you willing to spend money spend time sacrifice some activities just to make yourself more intelligent it starts there you want to improve your intelligence, you have to want to become smarter. Now, just a practical tip. What is the best form of effort that you can do to make yourself more intelligent? As in the most basic form, the simplest way to make yourself more intelligent, and it's so easy to do, yet not a lot of people do it. You know what's that? It's actually reading reading yes studies after studies have shown that the more you read the more you train your mind to understand books the higher your intelligence becomes you know why let me demonstrate let's pick one book right here by elizabeth kubler ross a very popular psychologist who specialized in the psychology of dying 
Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is smarter than me. Sa Tagalog, mas matalino si Elizabeth kaysa sa akin. Why? She has a book I don't. She has more experience than me in psychology. She's got a higher degree than me in psychology. Are you getting the point? What happens when you read? What happens if you force your, your mind to understand what she's talking about? What's happening? My mind is being upgraded to her level. See? So I read the book every day. I try to understand what she's saying. My intelligence every day, it's being upgraded and upgraded and upgraded. To the point that once I finish mastering the book, it seems like now my intelligence is within the level of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross because I did a lot of effort to understand, to reach her level. And by the time I finish mastering this book, I could say that my intelligence have improved big time. And why did that happen? Because I have chosen to read her work. That's the value of reading books. But the sad reality today is, sabi nga kanina doon sa slide, no? reading is already considered the lost art. Which means, not a lot of people today are into reading. There was this one study, although this is US data, but it's really disturbing if you think about it and apply in Philippine data, two-thirds of people never read for pleasure. Two-thirds. That's a lot. Two-thirds. Most people just read books because they have to. But the passion for reading, simply being curious about things that interest people, you'll read by your own. Very few people does that. Now, you connect that here in the Philippines. This is United States, two-thirds. I'm sure in the Philippines, this is higher. Right? This is higher because we are so obsessed with entertainment more than reading. People nowadays, especially in our culture in the Philippines, a lot of young people would rather be entertained and watch movies than read books. Let's have a self-check here. Who among you? You can say, in two years of the quarantine, you read more books than watched more episodes in Netflix. I doubt merong sampung studyanteng ganyan. What's the majority? You watched more movies, more series, more K-dramas than books that you have read. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mag-comment kayo dyan if you are not one of those people. But majority, I'm sure. You watch more movies than read books. Am I right? Now, you have to understand this. There is a difference between reading books and watching movies in terms of their effects on our intelligence, very different. Because when you read books, usually, the aim is to educate. The target of books like this is more on our intellect. It upgrades the way we think. It upgrades how we think. It improves our intelligence. It adds the number of questions we can answer. It adds to the number of problems we can solve, which does not happen often in entertainment unless you're watching documentaries or educational videos. But when you just watch mindless shows, the target is emotions. Eh. You are being enhanced to feel more emotions. You are not being stimulated to think. And, you know, if you just keep on feeling emotions, it does not contribute to your intelligence. Maybe it contributes to your emotional health, but not on the level of your thinking. I would say as a psychologist that one of the causes why a person would have low intelligence is too much entertainment. A lot of people today are too distracted by entertainment. And worse, in the Philippines, we are even considered 
the social media capital of the world. I think that's not a good thing. When you say that we are the social media capital of the world because that tells us many people today in the Philippines are distracted. Many people today in the Philippines would rather be entertained than, be, than become smarter. And it shows. We don't have enough time to discuss the evidences, but just take a look at the overall intellectual performance of our country compared to other countries. You just search the news. I'm sure you've heard some of some of this news. Just take a look at our politics. Supposedly, our politics is filled by intelligent people. But all of you would agree that Philippine politics lacks, a, la, lacks intellect, right? It's full of entertainment, but not intellect. Because again, I think we are too distracted by this entertainment in our country. The more you watch these kinds of things, entertainment junks, as I call it, is these shows have very low intellectual wavelength. Again, going back to book reading, what happens when you read this book? You are stretching your intelligence higher, upgrading your intelligence. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, higher than me. I read her intellect, which is higher than me. I force myself to get her. In the end, if I become successful, now we are in the same level. I became smarter. But that does not happen through these shows. Usually, when you watch shows like this, you are downgrading your mind. You, you have to downgrade your mind. Kasi nga entertainment eh. Diba? The intellectual wavelength is very low. You don't have to think. You don't have to solve problems. So what happens? You watch these shows over and over again that are designed just to play with your emotions. So what happens? You feel emotions and your intellect goes down to, those, to that level. Goes down. Goes down. Every day, it's going down. Every day, you're downgrading yourself until to the point that you find yourself no longer smart. I don't know. I think this picture is perfect to show what, what I mean, right? Ito, ito ka dati nung nag-iisip ka pa, nung mahilig ka pa magbasa ng libro. Yan. And then what? You are now being distracted by entertainment until to the point you would just rather feel than think. You have lost it. And you know, every time I teach this, nasasayangan ako eh, especially in our society today, in our technological environment today, we are not taking advantage of things that can make us smarter. Did you know that the top four universities in the world, you heard it right, in the world, they have YouTube channels and you can subscribe to these universities for free. And what do you get when you subscribe to these channels? You can listen to world-class lectures for free that can improve your intelligence especially about psychology you can listen to teachers from harvard teaching psychological topics cambridge stanford oxford you no longer need to go to harvard to be a visiting student to experience harvard education you can educate yourself simply set time every day let's say three hours a day listening to lectures of your interest within these universities. Wow! That is such a privilege. Question, but are we taking advantage of that privilege? I doubt. Because a lot of people today would rather subscribe to these mindless channels. Look at Rafi Tulpo in action. Definitely, this will not make you smart. You'll just be entertained or sometimes increase your blood pressure. But 19.1 million subscribers. This guy, content of videos, I don't want to comment, just see for yourself. 
but it will not make you smart. Millions of subscribers. Also, this guy, Kong TV, many of you may know Kong. Millions of subscribers. ABS-CBN Entertainment, which lots of its shows, I'm sure. Low wavelength of intellect, millions of subscribers. Compared to those channels that could be making us smarter, could be making us more critical thinkers, logical thinkers. Oh my goodness, nakakahiya naman sa mga universities na yan compared to this one. Okay, so again, as I close this lecture application for the third way to become intelligent, you need to develop your craving for being smart. You have to train yourself to teach yourself the importance of being smarter. Remember the parable of the talents. It's our spiritual responsibility. We can start there. Sir, how can I convince myself that I have to be smarter every day? It's what God wants you to do every day. Be smarter and smarter. Because if you will not have that kind of hunger in making yourself smarter, you'll not improve as a person. If you will just let the world sway you through this entertainment, mindless entertainment things, well, I, hindi ka talaga tatalino. Don't get me wrong, I am not anti-entertainment. There are times I also entertain myself. But I want you to check which one is greater. Are you spending more time in entertainment than more time being smart? That's bad psychologically. The number of hours you spend working on your intellect must be greater than the times that you are entertaining yourself. Paminsan-minsan okay yung entertainment. But when entertainment is your priority more than your intelligence, you are not upgrading your life. Alright? So, in summary, just to summarize everything I've said in this lecture, how do you enhance intelligence? Now we come up with this model. Genetically, we inherit something that determines how intelligent we are. But intelligence through our genes does not monopolize our overall intelligence because there are other forces out there that can further improve our intelligence, such as the environment that we are in, that we are designing, and the effort that we exert. You combine the effort, the desire, the hunger with the environment that we are in. Now, those two forces will big time influence your current level of intelligence. Do you have other tips on how people can become more intelligent that maybe you know and it worked for you? Can you please comment that in the comment section? Favor lang. Baka may alam ka pang ibang strategies on how to make yourself more uh, intelligent. Please write it down. Place it in the comment section of this video so that everyone in the class can see and they may have an idea what to do. Alright? Thank you everyone for listening. Again, it's been a pleasure teaching about intelligence. So, I will see you again next year for a new lesson in this subject. Thank you everyone. Have a great day and God bless. Bye-bye.